Please don't shoot Nintendo. It was all him. I didn't pirate anything. He's taken me out hostage. No, I'm not talking about emulation, Nintendo's lawyers. The Switch has actually had remarkable third-party support, especially compared to the last few Nintendo consoles. That lets us compare it directly with the Steam Deck, which is essentially the king of third parties, given that Valve makes about one game every decade. Every other company treats Steam as the default PC marketplace. Even you, Ubisoft, I see you crawling back here in shame. Now add achievements, you cowards. Because I am an idiot, I own several of the same games on both the Switch and Steam. So, in theory, we can compare them. But usually the Switch uses its own special settings, which aren't available on the PC version, because, well, essentially the Switch is so much weaker than every other platform. So actually, no, we can't compare them. Uh, I guess I can at least try. For Outer Worlds here, let's stick to just resolution, which according to Digital Foundry is a dynamic 720p while docked. Well, the Steam Deck version doesn't support dynamic resolution. Oh, come on, this is impossible. You can clearly see the difference in texture quality. The classic Unreal slow texture loading makes it look like the Switch's textures never load in at all. Didn't stop me completing the game though, I have over 25 hours on it, and 40 in Pokemon, so that should prove my commitment to low frame rates. At least they actually finished Outer Worlds before releasing it. A fun trick the deck has is that FSR is built in. So in this recording, the game is rendering internally at 720p and being upscaled to 1080p using FSR. You can tell by looking for these fizzling artifacts behind moving objects. Very similar, but less obvious than the same artifacts in God of War. It's a sad day. My capture box, this Haupage PVR rocket, which I bought when I was in college in 2012, has died. It lasted 11 years all the way into 2023 and then died on the 9th of January. Anyway, I gotta go out and buy a new one. Time to go to Best Buy. I better bring my chrome green BMW i8. You know, one of these days I'm gonna make a video that doesn't cost me a bunch of money. Regardless, I can totally understand why the Switch and the Steam Deck are both power limited. I mean, playing video games is very, very power intensive and they have to run off a battery. Your phone might get great battery life when it's sitting idle in your pocket, but load up a high intensity game and play from full to empty and tell me how long it lasts. So in a situation where you can't just pull as much power as you want from the wall, which do you choose? Performance or battery life? That's why the Switch uses an ARM processor, vastly more efficient than x86. Just look at Apple's M1 absolutely crushing it on just 30 watts. In fact, with the battery fully charged, the Switch is using just 13 watts to render this area. Yes, this is how my Switch is powered. No, I'm not open to criticism at this time. In the same scene, or as close to it as I could get, the deck uses about 23 watts. The difference is, the deck gives you choice. I could turn on half rate shading, limit the GPU to 3 watts, turn down the clock speed, turn the game's resolution even lower and upscale it further with FSR, and then limit it to 15 FPS because I'm insane, and now the game looks and plays like complete ass, but we've gone from 23 watts down to 14 watts. You know, I don't actually think a 4 cent saving to play this game is really worthwhile. And yes, that's streaming from the Steam Deck. But Outer Worlds is actually a pretty demanding game, all things considered. What about 2D lower end indie games, that kind of thing? Does power use drop linearly on both machines, or does the more powerful processor in the Steam Deck give you more of an advantage? I guess we'll find out. Well, this is interesting. On the deck, Night in the Woods draws only seven watts, but the Switch wants 12. Could this be a case of a lazy, powerful processor beating a stressed out low power one? Like in that old Top Gear episode where they raced a Prius against an M3. I'm honestly not smart enough to tell you. All I know is the Steam Deck kicks ass. This thing is probably the best value in games right now. It certainly completely embarrasses stupid overpriced uh, high-end GPUs from Nvidia and AMD. And I think it competes and beats, in a lot of cases, the PS5. I mean, even if we look at controls, both of my PS5 controllers, yes, both of them, drift already. This one's barely a year old, but the Steam Deck, you can replace the joysticks for about 30 bucks.
games on Steam are so much cheaper than on PSN and the eShop, especially the eShop. The only thing this PS5 and the Switch have above the Steam Deck is exclusive games. And even then, the PS5 has, what, two? Demon Souls and Ratchet and & Clank? And that's it? Where's the downside here? I think a Steam Deck is an instant buy, especially compared to an overpriced, understocked, and now unreliable PS5. Here's a question for you. With the enormous popularity of the Steam Deck, and the fact the most popular GPU on Steam is the 1650, like this one that I complained about in the last video, do you think the minimum spec for games is going to be kept under control, or are we going to see ballooning requirements like we have done every previous generation? Somehow I doubt it. They don't even keep promises that they themselves have made. Like, for example, next-gen games are going to be smaller, let alone ones that I've made up while I had a migraine lying in bed. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the support in the last video. I have been making videos since 2010, believe it or not, and it really means a lot to see people enjoying them. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, please reach out to me on Twitter. I try and read every comment and reply to the good ones, so if you get a reply, you made a good comment, I guess I'll see you next time.